we are uh, a lighting, architectural lighting manufacturer. I will not ask you how many of you knows Delta Light because I hope that uh, the majority knows Delta Light since we have been inviting you here. Uh, so I was saying that uh, I am uh, here tonight in my role of global brand ambassador for Delta Light. And uh, Delta Light, uh, as you know, is a, is a Belgian manufacturer. And uh, we were uh, founded in uh, 1989, thanks to uh, uh, Paul Amelot, uh, from a small uh, shop uh, which was uh, selling uh, hi-fi, so high fidelity, so stereo sound systems. Uh, it evolved with the time into a small uh, lighting operation and then became a company that today is based in Belgium, but it's operating in over 100 countries worldwide. So we have uh, our own operation, our own uh, facilities in many countries uh, from North America to Asia. And uh, still today, despite this uh, growth, we are a family run and owned company. So here you can see our founder, uh, Paul, and now the company has been, uh, has been at let's say, taken over by our by his two sons, uh, Jan and Peter, who are uh, managing, uh, you know, the, the, the company nowadays. With a great expansion, again, we continue to develop and grow, and we always bring, we try to bring a new technology and new design into our uh, uh, portfolio. So what do we do? We provide architectural solution. What does it mean to provide that architectural solution? It means, you know, to have nice product that could fulfill the needs of the designers to make sure that we can uh, propose the correct solution for the lighting every time that there is a project. So, as I said before, light is very personal. So, it will require also a personal approach. The relation with the client and with the designer is very important. Thanks to this, we can propose a lighting solution that will be... Uh, you know, augmenting the, 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 the success of a project. And I think you can see here uh, in this uh, amazing building, uh, as well as in other projects with NEO that we have uh, 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 successfully uh, supplied and delivered, starting from uh, the first few projects in uh, Germany, uh, from uh, Frankfurt to Dusseldorf to Berlin, uh, together with another very important uh, uh, architectural studio from Copenhagen SHL uh, to the two projects here in, uh, in uh, Holland, uh, in Rotterdam and here today uh, with MBRDV. We try to uh, interpret the desire of the, of the client, the desire of the designer to make sure that we can achieve a good and successful lighting scheme. And one of our main goal is to design for comfort. Comfort is something that for human being is extremely important. So we think that comfort must be likewise, you know, I think uh, this is one also of the very important uh, and success of, uh, of NEO, create comfort, visual comfort in this case. So making sure that uh, your uh, uh, lighting solution is discreet, is not interfering uh, with the with our activity is creating a uh, an atmosphere, and this is something that you can feel in this space. When you walk through the space, you feel an atmosphere. You feel that the space is uh, a high level space. You feel comfortable with the space, and uh, I would say that one of the secret of uh, a successful lighting scheme is when you uh, let the people uh, feel comfortable without understanding that lighting is giving you that uh, comfort solution. So it's all in the way that you use the light. It's not the lighting fixture, it's the lighting solution. So uh, creating comfort means being able to uh, illuminate correctly the object, the space, making sure that uh, you can visualize what you need, but at the same time, to be, to feel comfortable in that space. So our mission is to complete architectural vision. So, and that 
the point where comes the interaction with the designers, with the clients. The designer have their architectural visions. Each, uh, I would say, each practice has their own architectural vision. And so we try to assist them to complete. So we become part of this architectural vision. And then, you know, we work in many different types of projects from uh, uh, residential to retail to offices to hospitality. Nowadays, Delta Light has the ability, technology, and design to cover all this type of project. So what can we promise you? We can promise you these three things, comfort, simplicity, consistency. Okay, it means that the comfort I already explained to you, simplicity is a simple design, is a simple uh, uh, product that can be integrated and can become in, or even vis invisible in your space. Uh, depending from the solution that you're looking for, but at the same time, it's consistent. It's Belgian. It means also consistency. What can you find also in a Delta Light uh, problem? You can find the unexpected detail. The unexpected detail is what makes a difference from a Delta Light product to a product of another manufacturer. And so we want to we wanted to show you an example. You have also here. Uh, an example of the collaboration we had with the MDRDV also in product design when they came the first time to our factory and they were really impressed about our warehouse of, uh, of uh, profiles. Okay, and so they came up with this great idea of using scrap of the profiles to, uh, to produce this lighting fixture, which are a sustainable solution to um, to leftovers, and here you can see also uh, a customization that was done uh, for uh, for an event and for uh, the the book of uh, NVRDV is a table. If you look at it, you know from uh, from the top it looks like an urban uh, a setting really. So that's the unexpected detail. So to conclude, and again to leave. Uh, you know the the microphone uh, to uh, to the two uh, presentation we're gonna have tonight. Uh, this our goal is to work with you and not for you, because again it's through this collaboration that we can really uh, assist you in designing amazing project. Tonight I want to welcome you or take a trip with you in the world of MVRDV. So welcome to the world of MVRDV. MVRDV is founded by Maas van der Eijs de Vries. That's also where the name comes from. So you have Winnie Maas, Nathalie de Vries, and Jacob van der Eijs. But we are 300 people, and we are about 38 plus nationalities. So we're a big group of uh, creative people. And we design to change. Imagine you can do groceries in this beautiful arch or take your friends out for dinner. We create new ways of living. Imagine that you could live in a valley in the center of a city. We inspire possibilities. Um, you could dream about walking through depots of art that are usually not publicly accessible. We are about five offices. Our main office is in Rotterdam. And we have a few satellites um, operating all over the world. We have Shanghai, Berlin, Paris, and New York. And we create innovation. We, we create to be innovative, like the crystal houses here in Amsterdam. We like to be social, creating beautiful public spaces for people to enjoy. We like to be green, creating green surroundings uh, in interior spaces. And remarkable architecture, like this beautiful rock museum in Roskilde in Denmark. And we do it because of a changing world, for a changing world. But the truth is, people spend an astonishing 90% of their time indoors. And actually, MVRDV is mostly known for architecture and urbanism. But interiors are ultimately where we live. So they are really important to do it right. We dream of designing buildings as a whole, not only on the outside, but also on the inside. 
And interiors have always been part of our DNA, even though maybe that's not what we are the most known for. But let me take you on a little journey through them. They tend to be quite bold. We like to use a lot of color. We are quite daring. And we also love them to be very vibrant and playful, not to be too serious at moments. They are very transformative, like this silo buildings we transformed in Denmark. And they are also social, just like our architecture projects. We also like to be innovative and we try to uh, challenge people to think differently about retail. And we like to be very diverse and not doing everything with the same similar approach. We design from offices to uh, collective spaces like the depot in Rotterdam, from haute couture, like we go from boutiques, but we also do quite rock and roll, like this rock museum on the inside. We go from very small, like this uh, dog house we created from um, the creative di director of Muji. And we also like to think very big, like this super large interior. Also, we see urbanism almost as an interior. And we go from very low budgets, like this shop we did next door our office for our friends from Gros, to no budget almost. Of course, it never exists, but... But our interiors in general, they share a bold approach and they create experience that people remember. Brands, they form a substantial part of our clientele. And together we've explored uh, quite some topics. We've, we've explored craftsmanship, just like the crystal houses here in uh, Amsterdam. And many th people think we designed it for Chanel, but that's actually not the case. Um, it was a private investor. He wanted to make the street more attractive. And he has a few buildings on the street. So the first uh, tenant that moved in was Chanel. And then you see that um, we had this uh, concept of making a um, beautiful transparent facade, but unfortunately they clo closed the upper floor. But then Hermes really embraced the transparency. And then you really see the crystal house shine um, like it should shine. And we also explored materiality. How can we recreate uh, a, a material that is used a lot in luxury projects like for Bulgari. How can we recreate a marble in a new way? For example, with concrete and with glass. And that also from the interior uh, looks very beautiful. We explored immersion. Um, how can you immerse yourself at, in, in the most way you can into a brand? And this is an installation we've done for the Milano Design Week uh, for Bulgari. We've explored sustainability. What if you could create a recycled glass facade that almost looks like jade for this Bulgari project in Shanghai? And we also looked at flexibility, being flexible as a means of being sustainable for this uh, camper uh, Berlin. We looked at transparency, trying to bring more light into ground floors and basements for retail spaces. And we also looked into innovation, looking at new ways of um, approaching materiality into projects like this beautiful 3D printed uh, facade for Tiffany & Co. in Shanghai Airport. And also products. So together with Delta Light, we looked at uh, beautiful ways to, or try to find hidden beauty in um, their products that are normally beautifully hidden in the ceiling. And we also try to build communities together uh, for Neo, as uh, Tristan already explained. And this is the Neo house in, in Rotterdam, where we really try to invite as many people as possible uh, inside. But it's also a lot about identity and creating spaces that reflect the identity of the brands, such as here in the Neo house in Amsterdam. So designing for brands requires a customized approach. Um, it's about creating the ultimate brand experience, an experience that re resonates with their identity, their clients, and also with the local community, trying to invite people to come have a look. In retail, designs typically last five to 10 years, so adopting sustainability is more urgent than ever. And for this uh, presentation tonight, uh, the, the theme was about designing spaces shaping life. So, We've assembled a few projects uh, that are built around shaping life, but they're all kind of connected to a brand as well. So for our own house, we built a home. For the Neo house, we built a community. 
For Shopify, we looked at a way to collaborate and to reconnect their um, employees. For Delta Light, we discovered hidden beauty in their products. And for Camper, we made a project that can adapt and that can react. And for Tiffany, we tried to innovate. So starting with our own office, in a way, we are also our own brand. So we also designed a space that reflects and that makes our employees feel at home. So this is the space of our office. It's a building by Mascons. It uh, was one of the first buildings after the war that was constructed. So if you know, Rotterdam um, was a little bit destroyed after the war. Um, and then this was the first building uh, being constructed as one of the biggest uh, developments. Actually, the plans were already there before the war, um, but then they could not happen. And that's why they could build it very quickly afterwards. So here you see Hugh Maskant. He's a very tall man, very big man in architecture, physically, but also as a name. Um, and he designed this really beautiful, uh, they call it now the Industriegebouw, and it was originally designed as a, a multifunctional building, which was also quite uh, new for that time. There, were, there was a car shop in our um, spaces where we are, and in the rest of the building, there were flexible workspaces and retail spaces in the plinth. And today, the Industriegebouw is again flourishing as a multifunctional building with many offices, very creative offices, nice places to have coffee. And there's also some really beautiful details preserved, like the spiral staircase inside all the spaces. And in a few years ago, Condé Nast Traveler, they announced uh, the building to be the coolest one uh, in Rotterdam. So going back to our office, we started with those five. Uh, you could almost see them as little houses. So it's a new house uh, for the MVRDV uh, community. And we also designed it as a house. So you will find spaces that are really uh, like spaces you would feel that at, you could find at a house. And this is when we uh, acquired the space. It was uh, operated by, um, by a broker. And you can really see that it was... Uh, quite uh, closed, it was not very open, the color choices were also debatable. Um, you see here also beautiful carpet on the floor, beautiful uh, branding on the walls. Um, but then we were very happy to have this new space because we were really growing out of our old, old space as we were growing. And we designed the office to be um, kind of three layers of design, also three ways to look at the building. Uh, you see in the blue spaces, that's where we have our ateliers, that's where we work. And then in the red zone in the middle, that's where we have our social space, is also where you enter into the building. We have a big lunch table, that's also where the reception is. And then all the yellow spaces you see in, in these floor plans are our meeting rooms. And we try to really open up the building as much as possible. So this is our uh, socializing uh, space. You see the reception desk in the, in the center. And you really have a view on everything. Uh, we try to be very uh, open and transparent. And you also see that there's this tired seating uh, we, where you just saw the picture from. And we use it for a lot of things. We, it's, it's almost like our sofa in our living room. So we, we use it for inviting people, inviting friends, um, showing people our office. Uh, so we, we sit, use it to say happy birthday, uh, we also uh, look at uh, sport matches when there's a big competition. And then our reception is almost like a flower pot. It's almost like an exploded flower pot where the receptionists are sitting in, in a round uh, approachable shape. So it's a kind of 360 degrees uh, weight that you can approach uh, the people at the reception. And then hanging above them, you have this beautiful uh, plants hanging. And now it's really more like a jungle. This was at the very first year. But now the plants are really hanging, almost hiding the receptionist. Mm -hmm. And also from above, it's quite a beautiful effect. You can even talk with the receptionist from the balcony. And then this is our lunch table. Actually, this lunch table has been a very long time in our company. Um, it's almost like the, the icon of MVRDV. Everybody knows about our lunch table from the very beginning. It's been with us since a very long time and it's where we have lunch all together um, at once. And we also use it for, for parties uh, when, we, when we win a competition, for example, or we use it to showcase and open our office for people to come have a look. 
Then we have our meeting rooms. We have 10 meeting rooms, uh, which have 10 teams, and it's also 10 ways of meeting each other. We looked at how we used to work in our old office, where we only had one meeting room, and how people were trying to work their way around, um, how to meet. So we came up with 10 rooms that kind of um, fit with how we work. So you see here in the workshop room, we um, have this very, very long table. Uh, it's, a, it's a very happy room. It's a, a room where you can really be creative. You have magnetic walls and this beautiful long table on which you can put uh, a project and really look at it as a whole. We have a magnet room, which is a dark room where we can have all the walls hang or fully filled with our plans or our drawings and assess them uh, together. And then we have the lounge room, which is a bit more informal. It's also if you need to have a talk, uh, which is perhaps not the easiest one. It's also a bit less intimidating to sit at a big table, but to have more like a lounge furniture and a warmer color. Then this is our boardroom. Uh, we mainly use it to impress our clients. The funny thing is um, most investors and developers, they're dressed in these dark blue suits. So in this room, they really feel at home. Um, they kind of match with, with everything. And then here you see Jakob in our staircase, uh, which we also use to showcase the Crystal House's uh, mock-up. We have the ping pong room, which we call it the game room. And the only reason the room is green is because the ping pong table was green. Uh, but we also use it as a, as a meeting room. And then we have the drawing room where everything is, is white, but you can draw on all the walls. And then we have the um, kind of window camera where we showcase all our models and the initial idea for this room was to have a lot of blue foam models that we could play around uh, in, in our physical models. Uh, and therefore it's this kind of sky blue, this blue foam blue that many architects might recognize as a color. Then this is our living room uh, where we have uh, guests. They can wait for an appointment. Yeah. And our writing room, if you really need to focus on a text, you can sit in this room mm -hmm. and write or next door in our reading room, you can be expired. But all these rooms, they can also function as meeting rooms. So it's kind of a multifunctional way of working. And at night, you have this beautiful effect from the street. Then going to our ateliers, uh, there we kept everything a bit more neutral. Uh, so it's really focused on work and creating a really extra large table uh, with no legs. So you can roll towards each other more easily and collaborate in a good way, which is a table we designed uh, on our own together with a um, uh, metal uh, supplier that made this beautiful frame for us. Also on all the glass walls, you can draw with white markers. It's also all our walls in all the whole corridors, they're magnetic, so you can hang um, all your drawings and have meetings, brainstorms, and also our um, Cabinets in between, they are an A0 size, so it's perfect for putting physical models or looking at drawings. Then here you see our model room, uh, which is uh, quite important for us. You see all the blue foam and also the blue foam models. In our old office, this room was very small and it was also inside our atelier spaces, so this was a very big improvement for us. Then we go very quickly into the garden. This is kind of the Expedicistraat. This was the street that was used in the past uh, for uh, trucks to make deliveries into all the spaces of the Industriegebouw. And over the years, this has been growing into a very vibrant space uh, with many events and parties, uh, which is very nice for meeting the people. But then in 2017, we started growing even more and then we needed more spaces. So then we kind of as a parasite almost started invading more spaces into the building, such as the old uh, bicycle parking, which we transformed into uh, new office spaces uh, and where our friends from Delta Light made a beautiful impact, making our lives a bit more bright. And then also we moved into the space that we designed ourselves for, for the people from Kroos and even here now we have our office spaces. But coming back to NEO, um, NEO, um, here we, um, here our biggest uh, challenge was 
how can we make a space for NEO that they can build a community in the Netherlands? NEO is not known in the Netherlands. Or back, back when we designed the first NEO house in Rotterdam, uh, it's not a really rightly known company. So how to make this very successful company, uh, which was already very, very um, popular in, in China, how can we bring uh, this to the Netherlands? And one of the main mottos of NEO and the main dream of the founder is this blue sky coming, uh, which Tristan already explained very beautifully, and also a community-driven company uh, looking at their NEO houses as really spaces uh, for the community and to celebrate a joyful lifestyle. So this is the first NEO house um, in Chongqing, uh, which we designed um, for NEO. And there it was all about uh, creating neutral spaces for, uh, the, for the car gallery. And then as you went up in a staircase, which was inspired by the city skyline, you enter into these uh, club areas, which are for the community members, uh, for places where they can meet with meeting rooms, lounge spaces, and also this really beautiful view onto the city. And of course, uh, spaces for the whole family to enjoy. And as NEO is expanding uh, and opening new houses in key European cities, uh, they we were wondering how can we bring this essence of NEO to the Netherlands? And how can our design enable NEO to build a vibrant and local community? So for NEO House Rotterdam, this is uh, what we looked into. The first location uh, for NEO in the Netherlands, which is on a really beautiful corner in one of the hippest streets of Rotterdam, um, but the challenge here was, was that it's a rather small unit. So usually new houses are a bit larger than this one. So the challenge here was to bring as many uh, program into this uh, small space as possible. And also to see if we could find a common ground between the people of Rotterdam and NEO's values. So one of the values of NEO is being pure and also, if you look uh, at people from Rotterdam, actually people from the Netherlands in general, they like to be genuine, they're very confident, they're very straightforward, and they're very clear in how they uh, communicate and also in how they like to dress no-nonsense. But they're also very human and they're also very living and warm. They're, they like to be comfortable, they're quite intuitive. Uh, but also progressive. Just like NEO is progressive, also uh, Rotterdam as a city is very uplifting and dynamics. There's always many things happening, many changes going on. And they try, they, they are daring, they like to be bold uh, and also very efficient, but also sophisticated. So it's being efficient, but at the same time being very sophisticated in a purposeful way, being controlled, refined, engineered, precise and solid, just as in the harbor of Rotterdam. So the typical Neo house is the car gallery where the product is the hero and where you have warm but very light and neutral tones. And then you, at the other side, you have the club, which is a social heart uh, for people to meet and to connect with each other. And in the Neo house in Rotterdam, the separation between the gallery and the club is done by a gradient to create one continuous space instead of having two spaces or two floors as if it would be on other neo houses. And we did this with a terrazzo-like material, which is known as the good floor, which recycles uh, plastic pollution from the river mass in Rotterdam. So in the end, we combined the typical neo house, but we gave it some Rotterdam influences. We gave it engineered details, um, which are inspired by the port of Rotterdam, but we also uh, added some honest and pure um, into the, the space, such as the exposing the raw concrete from, from the building, which is also a building which was built not very long after the war. So here you see uh, the communal table, where you have this kind of, it's almost like crane type of table that lifts up, almost like the way that a, a container is lifted from the ship. And also in the color use, we looked at a common crown between Neo with the glowing reds, which you also find in the bricks, the sunbaked yellow, we have this beautiful yellow sky bridge in Rotterdam, and the soft azure blue, which you also have um, in the harbor of Rotterdam and in the water, which you see also in the, in the children's hub where we used this 
vibrant yellow and also the map of Rotterdam on the, on the floor finish. So together with NEO, we developed a diverse program to speak to a wide audience. There's many things to see and to experience in the NEO house, starting with the shop windows. It's not only a place where you see the car, but it's also a place that triggers the curiosity of passerby beyond the cars with local art pieces. So in the shop windows, you will see not only the car, but also art pieces by local uh, artists, which change every now and then. So here you see um, one of the first uh, pieces celebrating one of the local designers in Rotterdam. But there's also a cafe to relax and to meet and enjoy a coffee together. And you see that um, the, the bar of the cafe in the Rotterdam uh, Neo House it slides open into the streetscape and it's also a street where there's a lot of terraces. So it really invites people to pass by and have a coffee uh, almost on the go and to enjoy a break into the sun. But there's also the lounge to relax and there's also the display of the new life products where you see um, these beautiful um, products that were developed for Neo. And also here, uh, there is a collaboration um, really bonding Neo House to Rotterdam once again, inviting as many uh, people inside of the new house to come and have a look. And then you have the meeting rooms, which are more in the back of the space. And they are, these are also bookable, so you could also go there and have a meeting together. They are in the warm uh, color zone of the, of the project. So as you go from the car gallery into the social zone, the gradient becomes more dark, warm and intimate uh, into the meeting rooms. And then one um, piece that is really nice in this new house is that we have this retractable crane table in the center of the space and also movable wall panels, which enables Neo to make workshops and lectures when they close off the middle area and they move the table up, but they also can have larger gatherings. And uh, as Tristan was saying, they are having up to 20 events a month, uh, even live musics uh, at some time. So you see here the crane table, visitors can drink their coffee, but it also moves up, up into the ceiling. And it's also finished with an acoustic material. So you can have a forum like we are having right now. And then if you close off with movable partition walls, you can have also closed presentations. So this is turning the new house uh, in, in Rotterdam into a joyful, welcoming and vibrant space to meet, enjoy, relax, reflect, and play. Then for the new house in Amsterdam, um, here with this, this beautiful location, this beautiful historical building, and it's also on this important uh, tourist access from the, Stansel fish, from the central station to Leidseplein. So a really beautiful location, not only location-wise, but also this beautiful historic aspect of the building, starting uh, as the tallest building in Amsterdam when it was built. Uh, it was built for the New York Life Insurance Company and it was having retail spaces on the bottom two floors and then offices on the upper floors. And then in the 1908, Metz & Co, they came into the building. They were at the time a very iconic department stores. And so all the floors, they were in, converted into retail spaces. And then at the top in 1933, uh, Metz & Co commissioned Herit Rietveld to make this beautiful roof pavilion introducing modern design and fashion uh, into the Netherlands uh, with many events which were very uh, exclusive. And up until today, you see this beautiful Metz uh, pavilion at the top. Then in 1985, Dam restores the cupola and he also transformed the roof into a cafe and restaurants, really with beautiful views uh, onto the city of Amsterdam. But then in 2013, um, the darkroom concept of Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, yeah, they kind of closed up the upper floors. They were no longer publicly accessible. The Rietveld Pavilion uh, was closed. And also many of the original interior details were covered up. Also, all the windows, they were closed uh, to create this darkroom concept. And as you can see, uh, for people that can read Dutch, it was not always received as the best uh, design. But then in 2024, um, there was this opportunity to create a new flagship for NEO. Blue sky is coming because here we have seven floors. So also an opportunity to really 
translate the brand vision and also the brand's identity into a atmospheric journey that goes from the earth to the sky. So as you can see, Neo has twofold uh, logo, one representing the sky and one representing the earth. So we made spaces that breed Neo's design uh, DNA going from a very inviting bottom two floors to the home of a friend in the middle floors, going up to more sky layers, which are calm, serene. And at the top, you have this joyful and very bright uh, experience, which really link to the values of Neo to be pure human, sophisticated and progressive as a brand. So it's a tailor-made user journey uh, that connects to Neo's values. And then on every floor, there's something else uh, to, you can discover, you can relax. And then as you go up, you grow, you learn, you can create, um, renting the co-working and the chambers. And then there's a beautiful exhibition floor with the VIP experience at the top. So the beautiful thing about the transformation from Neo is that we have now a building that is again, publicly accessible for everyone. And the building is again, restored in a beautiful, transparent uh, manner. So it triggers the feeling that you want to be part of the community uh, by restoring this transparency. So we, we removed the dark interior of the previous tenants, but we try to do it protecting the historical traces. So there's this beautiful historical staircase. There's a beautiful atrium on the ground floor. There used to be more atriums in the building. Unfortunately, those were lost. And then also, of course, uh, the interventions of Case Dam. On the, on the sixth floor and the beautiful roof pavilion by Rietveld. And we tried to be very clear in what were our interventions. We made paneling that are remi reminiscent of the paneling of the historic interiors, but on every floor it's translated into a different way, but it's very distinctive and it shows the layer which creates this journey from earth to sky. And we did it in a way that it's reminiscent of the past, but it also is in an innovative way, the same way as Crystal Houses is looking in an innovative way to the past. And also that artists in the Netherlands are looking to the beautiful world famous Dutch skies um, from the golden age. And also the same similar way as uh, Iris van Herpen creates this beautiful 3D printed uh, innovative colors that could almost be reminiscent of those from the past. And we also looked at the color, uh, not the color palette, but also the material palette uh, of Neo's typical uh, houses. And we looked at how can we make them more responsible and sustainable. So it's an atmospheric journey from earth to the sky. And we go floor by floor, starting on the ground floor where we have a material palette, which is more neutral but still taking um, inspiration from historical uh, elements, such as on the right top, you see the floor of the Rijksmuseum, which is this beautiful terrazzo floor and doing it in an innovative way. And the 3D printed cannelier wall panels uh, from recycled materials covering the walls and creating this beautiful cannelier wall stone effect representing the earth. Then as you go up, you also see there is a beautiful connection from the ground floor through the atrium to the cafe, uh, which you can go with the beautiful staircase. And here we also introduced a little bit the warm tones of the yellow, creating this joyful atmosphere, creating a beautiful visible place from the street. Um, you really want to be part of what's happening inside of the building when you see people sitting in the windows, enjoying a coffee together. And there's also, which is something very rare for the city center of Amsterdam, that you can enjoy a coffee and there's also space for your children to um, play and uh, have a nice time as well. Then as you move up into the, third, the second and the third floor where we are now, there's the lounge, the forum, there's a children's hub and co-working spaces. And here we looked at the beautiful brick tones that you can find in Amsterdam and creating this really more warm, uh, almost like a cocooning type of spaces. So there's the lounge. It's almost a living room, uh, you could say, with also a communal table where you can uh, collaborate together and you have the forum to have beautiful events. And then there's also the meeting rooms and the children's hub where you can have, this is my favorite room, um, where all the walls are covered in uh, felt fabric, and you 
can have your kids also have a wonderful time. Then on the fourth floor, there's the exhibition space where you have, this is the first layer of the sky. It's inspired by the famous Dutch, Dutch sky at dusk. And you see that there's this kind of gradient colors that you would have in the sky, which are reflected in the material choices. So there's this wallpaper that goes from the earthy tones going up into the sky. And it's used for uh, showing uh, the innovative products of um, NEO, but it also invites local uh, artists to be celebrated and to show their art pieces. Then on the sixth floor, there's an event and research spaces. Um, you could have a beautiful yoga session with a beautiful view uh, onto Amsterdam, um, but you could also use it as uh, event space. And it's really also celebrating the joyful uh, sky, which is more coming up into the noon palette with the beautiful yellows and bright blues. And then finishing at the top, restoring the beautiful reed belt uh, pavilion into its original um, state, also used for events, for exhibitions, but really harvesting the beautiful views, uh, the 360 degree views on the sky and on Amsterdam. So blue sky coming for real to Amsterdam. Then I'm going to go a bit quicker through the other projects. I'm already talking quite long. I'm sorry. So for Shopify, we looked at the way to collaborate and to reconnect. The story of Shopify spaces is that they wanted to create a new office in Berlin, but then the coronavirus uh, came and then they had to rethink how they want to use their office spaces. And this happened in the middle of a building project that they already had to restore or to transform this uh, 60s building into new offices. The original design was done by another uh, company and they asked uh, MVRDV to look at how they could bring the shoppy folks back together as soon as possible. Because they acknowledged during COVID that uh, the best way to do focused form is at home. Um, so th really the question is, how can we create an office that is really focused on collaborating and reconnecting after the coronavirus? So how can we create a space that can compete uh, with being at home, but really bringing people together? So they wanted to have spaces uh, for collaboration, meeting rooms, team building and relationships, but they also wanted a local experience, something that is truly uh, Berlin. And they wanted us to think about uh, recycling as much as possible, not only that they already had a design and they ordered already a lot of materials for the building sites, everything was ordered from furniture to lighting to material finishes. So how can we really use that in a in a good way, so they would not have to have it all gone to waste. So how can they be more responsible and also more healthy in the way they look at their spaces? But it's also an opportunity to explore and to innovate, to have a new way uh, of working together. And this really connects to the values uh, of Shopify in various ways. What we also have done is we looked at the Shopify's visual identity, which is very bright, very colorful, and we translated it into a color palette uh, for the Berlin port that they wanted to create. So what we've done is that the spaces were already having a lot of finishes. They already had floor tiles. They already had the exposed ceilings. Um, they already had the white walls. And what we've done is we created quite dedicated insertions uh, that really clarifies uh, the new insertions into the project. And we've done that looking at Berlin, looking at spaces that are very into Berlin's culture, but that could be translated into spaces for uh, collaboration in the Berlin port. So let's make a quick tour. Um, in the lobby, we looked at the street art, the typical metro spaces. How can we recreate that into the lobby? Because they, most of the people, they would come from the metro or the streets. So you see here, they already had a reception desk and we looked at the way to uh, reuse the millwork they already had and also all the wall finishes and the floor finishes was already there. The only thing that I want to tell you is that we thought that the reception was kind of blocking the connection to the outdoor. So what we've done is flip the reception desk, made it approachable from two sides and made the connection again to the courtyard, making it more colorful, refinishing it with a beautiful uh, blue tile. So we split the reception in two, we created a new corner, we looked at the furniture they already had, adding one piece here and there. We also recycled all the lighting they already had, but we recreated a new lighting plan together with the lighting uh, advisor. 
And then here you see the reception desk is now really guiding you more with the view towards the outside and maybe in the future they could even open up and have a beautiful terrace on the outdoor. Then on, for the collaboration rooms, they wanted us to have uh, to create rooms that would be multifunctional with meeting tables, but also with more informal ways of meeting. So we created kind of a colored insert, which would be the lounge, and then the rest of the space, which was already there. We reused again all the furniture, all the lighting fixtures, and we looked at uh, three types and three teams, how they could recreate and how they could have these multifunctional meeting rooms with informal and also formal uh, meeting tables. Then also um, really making it uh, compatible with how you work at home is to also create a space where people can socialize and connect. So we try to recreate this kind of beer garden atmosphere uh, into their uh, lunch space and also place where they have uh, coffees. So it's really as if you would sit uh, in a park and you can collaborate and enjoy a coffee together. And also there uh, at its kind of a bone garden, like a tree garden where you can connect in a more informal way. Then a really beautiful room, I think, is the secret room, uh, which connects to the secret rooms in Berlin with this kind of secret entrances, uh, beautiful gold tones, uh, many board games and kind of hidden mysterious worlds. Um, so what we've done here is we again made this color insert, but here it's a curtain that hides multifunctional walls that can uh, create different scenarios. It can be closed and then it's a normal meeting room, but we also have uh, shelving for board games. We have a wall on which you can draw, but there can also be a screen uh, where you can have uh, enjoy a movie together or share IDs. And then the last one is the club, uh, which is really, of course, celebrating the Berlin nightlife and which is also a digital uh, experience that they could change uh, to the setting and the mood that they wanted to create to collaborate. So this is a dark space and it's really all about the walls, which were beautiful projections uh, that you could feel as if you're sitting in a, in a park or in a forest, but at the same time, it can also be many other things. So you can also have the flexible furniture that can be moved around to create all kinds of settings. So you have also a big screen for conferences, but you can also do teamwork, team building. You can have a party or just have lunch together. Then for Delta Light, um, we have this beautiful uh, table right there. And it was all about uh, discovering this kind of hidden beauty when we visited the factory in Belgium. So the showroom kind of celebrates the elegance and the beauty of the Delta Light products. It's very simple, very beautiful, very sophisticated. Um, but we were really inspired by uh, all these profiles that are kind of hidden behind uh, all this beautiful uh, simplicity. And also in a way, they have some beauty uh, in them. So if you look at them, and it creates a beautiful composition. So. What can we do with it? And we also saw that there's some scrap pieces that get lost. Uh, unfortunately, it's unavoidable uh, during the, the process. So you see here all the profiles they have. And if you configure them in a new configuration, uh, something magical happens. Um, so you have this, uh, we call it the high profile. And we did it together with Delta Light. And also because the light comes from the top, it could create this beautiful uh, effect on the surface below. And the nice thing is that we won the Zine Awards uh, with the lamp, so it was very beautiful. And then if you combine more and more together, it becomes even more interesting. And that's when this uh, table uh, was came to life. And also with one switch, it becomes a beautiful light object, which was the decor for the launch of the Attitudes book. It's almost inseparable uh, as, as they are belong together. Then for Camper, uh, we created uh, a space that can adapt and react. So here it's, um, we have the Camper Hotel in Berlin, which is also in Berlin Mitte, just as the Shopify offices. And it's on a very um, vibrant shopping area. It's corner. Uh, on the ground floor. The camper hotel was already created, 
but they were a little bit struggling uh, with the ground floor. They wanted to have a retail space. They wanted to have a lobby and also a cafe uh, where people can have their breakfast, but also come for dinner, be there for lunch. So how can we design a lobby, a shop, a restaurant uh, that can embody a bit more camper spirit? Uh, so we looked at different ways of how we can do it. Do we do it all separately? Do we combine a few program elements or do we combine them all at once? Because in reality, the spaces will not be used at the same moment in the day. So we created the three programs which could um, interact with each other and they form one space. One can grow a bit uh, if the lobby is very busy, it can extend a bit into the shop. And if the cafe is more busy, it can extend more into the shop again as well. So we've done it with a color gradient that represents the three programs. You have the, the lobby, the retail, and then the cafe at the front. And we've done it with one connecting element, uh, the big bar elements, which is 18 meter long, which is really the interacting piece with all the customers from the lobby to the retail to the cafe. And also there's another uh, gradient, which is maybe not so apparent. There's also the gradient from the more public to the more private with a facade that opens up uh, during the day when it's a beautiful day in Berlin. The facade slides open completely and then there's almost no boundary between outside and inside. And also you see here this concept that there's different um, peaks in the use of these spaces so they can all kind of extend and adapt to the needs of camper uh, throughout the day. So there's not really clear boundaries. So it's offering sustainability, but it goes beyond the responsible materials. It also enables adaptability and it doesn't use extra resources. If they would want to extend the cafe one day, they can very easily. And this outspoken color gradient connects all the activities uh, together into one, one room. Then the very last one I'm showing you is the Tiffany uh, facade in Changi, which you saw already in the beginning. So well, Tiffany is of course very well known. It's a 20th century icon. It's a symbol for New York and New York chic. Um, and of course, it represents this unstoppable energy, uh, their optimism and the strength. And they are all about celebrating love and treasured relationship. The ring which they designed is, of course, the most famous for uh, engagement ring, celebrating love, celebrating diamonds, uh, symbols of beauty and longevity, the craftsmanship um, with really old techniques, but also cutting edge technology. They have a lot of references to nature in the design of their jewelry, um, and it meets the precision of the human hand, but they also like to dream. Uh, they like to evoke wonder and they like to evoke dreams uh, also in the design of their shop windows. So Tiffany & Co is evolving uh, as the brand is uh, trying to be more forward looking, and they also want to stay true to its heritage. They want to appeal to a younger crowd, um, they want to celebrate a bit more the inclusive and the equal love. They revisit some house icons, uh, kind of bringing them back, celebrating them. And they like to embrace the openness and the diversity. So how to translate this into their storefronts? It's a kind of new type of timelessness because the most sustainable thing is to design something so beautiful that it gets cherished and it's still very valuable from very early uh, in in the 30s and the 50s to even now that people still like to um, wear it. But in reality, the retail spaces, they change a lot. Uh, they change locations, they change uh, buildings, they want to renovate, they want to renew. So how to be responsive and responsible. And we were inspired by the way they actually treat uh, jewelry and also gold in their production process where they really try to close the loop because gold is so precious you don't want to uh, let it go and you don't want to get it lost. So for Shanghai Airport we designed a facade which is of course very Tiffany but we also try to give a local touch so we extended the typical Tiffany blue and we gave it also a kind of a shade that is a bit more uh, coherent with Singapore, kind of inspired by the ocean. 
but also we're celebrating the deep blue of sapphire gemstones. And we looked at uh, creating a pattern also inspired by the ocean. So looking at the coral reefs, which are near the southern islands of Singapore, but which are also um, in the jewelry of Tiffany. And we try to do it using a material that recycles old fishing nets from the Singapore region and use it as a base material for the 3D printing uh, of our facades. So you see here uh, on the right hand side, this uh, robot from Actual, which is a local company here in Amsterdam. And they created this beautiful uh, facade for Tiffany & Co in Changi Airport. But since it's an airport, there were some challenges uh, along the way, um, which I will tell a bit about later. So it's a facade built up out of two layers. Uh, you have the 3D printed pattern, which is inspired by the coral, and you have the screen printed glass that has the gradient from the Tiffany blue to the ocean hue. And we did this with the inner layer, we did it uh, with this beautiful printed glass uh, gradient. And then the 3D printed pattern is based on a set of model modules, six modules that could be uh, creating this beautiful pattern. Here you see uh, some of the mock-ups and it's all done uh, using plastic waste from the ocean. And the, ch the challenge here was uh, the fire safety, of course, being an airport, fire safety is very important. Um, so Bureau Milan, they solved uh, the issue by adding a chemical to that mixture, also uh, using uh, components from the seawater uh, to create a fireproof um, setting for this beautiful facade. And here you see the outer layer, which has all the modules, which then combines into this beautiful 3D printed effect, which is also from both sides, as well as the inner and the outer layer, a very beautiful effect.